introduction and basics of grounding. I'm pretty sure you have already got pretty good understanding of this subject. Maybe a lot of you have got already experience in your workplace. Maybe you have already done a lot of projects on this earthing, bonding, lightning. So the idea is just to make sure we are on the same page, we have got the same understanding. And yeah, so this is just to make sure that we have got the same understanding of the subject. So basically for topic number one, um, the things that I'm going to cover are basics of grounding of electrical systems and equipment, lightning and its effect on buildings, structures and electrical systems, static charges and the need for bonding, ground electrode system and dealing with installations having sensitive electronic equipment. Okay, so before I turn over the pages, I just want to touch base with you with regards to a number of issues. So basically, um, we are talking about earthing system, all right? So the idea is, if there is an abnormal situation, especially related to the ground, let's say if you have got an earth fault, if you have got lightning, if you have got a switching impulse, if you have got something like that, harmonics or something, right? The idea is there must be a pathway so that you can transfer that signal, that transient, whatever you want to call it, right, to the ground. So this is the idea. This is the thing that we are going to establish, but depending on the nature of that signal, depending on the nature of that impulse, depending on the wave shape of that signal or impulse, there must be good earthing installations, good path to the ground. When I say good, it means that, well, it has got a number of characteristics that we are going to cover together, right? So this is the idea. This is what we are going to achieve. And now the location, the equipment, the asset on which this protection is to be applied is also important. Something like you're going to apply that on a building or on a structure or on a panel or on a cubicle or on a transformer or on a motor or what. Okay, so these are the things that we have to consider. So basically, before everything starts, we have to have a full study of the system. We need to understand the system. What is the system? Well, what do you mean by what is the system? Okay, I am, say, an engineering manager in, 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 in an industry, in a business, in a company. Okay, hey, Mr. Electrical Manager, engineering manager or something like that, okay? If someone talks to you regarding your system, you should have enough information about your system. Say, yes, we have got this installation here, that asset here, this, 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 and the system has got, for example, these voltages, and basically, okay, so you are more involved in LV, yeah. Or no, quite the contrary, we are more involved in HV. Or, for example, if it is America, for example, also we have got, I don't know, sub-transmission or something like that. So we need to understand the definition. Where are you? Is that distribution? Is that transmission? Is that sub-transmission? Where is that? So what could be the requirements of that system? So these are the important things to understand. So before I just move forward, I just wanted to define that, okay? So basically, when we talk about the objective of grounding is that, okay, so you know what? I am already responsible for this network. I am responsible for this power system in this company, in this utility, all right? So what? My, my idea is this. Everything has to be all the, all the events that we have got here, either the transfer of current, for example, the, let's say, the rise of the voltage, the transfer of power or whatever, when you think about all these things, when you say this is this much volt or this is this much amp or Ka or this is this much Kva or something like that, it has to be based on a reference point. 
So we have to have the same understanding when I say this voltage is 11 kV. Your understanding must be also 11 kV. When I say this panel has been rated at 11 kV, you should have also the same understanding. It's not like I say something, you say something else. Especially, especially if they have got two systems neighboring each other. You are company number one, I am company number two. You have got your own zone substation, I have got my own zone substation, and they are pretty much next to each other. So there is a cable in between, and this cable has been grounded from the two ends. So when you say it's been grounded, it means that your understanding is that at your location, that connection should be connected to zero volts. Same as me, right? But if there is a difference in potential between the two ends of the cable, in that case, we are going to get into a real problem, right? Because as soon as you have got a difference in potential, obviously you've got a current, okay? That has to be controlled. So these are the things when I say you need to have a good ground reference. This is the must. If you have got protection relays or something like that, you want to make sure that your air fault relays are working okay or something. All that tripping and the setting and the operation and all these things depend upon defining a reasonable appropriate reference point and that reference point in ma on many occasions on many instances circumstances is the ground reference so basically what is it is that we are going to intentionally allow some currents or signals or whatever just being pushed back to the ground or sent to the ground or delivered to the ground well, we have to be very careful about that. That ground by itself, you can think about it like a cube, okay? Like a box, all right? Pair a square meter, pair a square inch, pair a square feet, or something like that, okay? So it has got a volume. And in that volume, you have got substance, you have got soil, all right? So that has got a resistance, of course. So when you are pushing that current into that soil mass, what happens is that you will have a voltage. So basically, the infrastructure that you put for that ground reference should be proportional or appropriate to that current that you're going to push into that because you can think about the resultant voltage that can appear in your system, in your grounding system. And if it is exposed, for example, to a panel, an innocent person by means of a touch potential can be killed. So this is the importance of that ground reference and the calculations regarding the current. Is, is it going to be as a result of lightning current or is it just the surge current or is it the fault current or what? Is that the residual current or what kind of current is your expectation? What is the perspective current that you would guess will go into the ground? Just, for, I don't know, an assessment from before. Okay, and as a result of that, then you would be able to define, oh, okay, so these are the, for example, tools, these are the equipment that I need to have in order to protect myself and protect my equipment against that signal, against that current, against that wave shape, okay? So these are the things that we need to understand. Well, based on that terminology, then <clears throat> we are now in a position to make a decision. Okay, so Mike, you are going to have a grounding system here? Well, maybe not. Oh, really? Well, yeah. This is an ungrounded, uh, uh, see, this, is, this is an LV system, right? Okay, and in my opinion, the fault currents here are not going to be so high, you know? We have already made some calculations. Oh, yeah, okay. And by the way, we have got some kind of, I don't know, insulation. We have got a lot of protection. So even if you have got a fault, something like that, I'm not worried about that. So you're thinking about I square T. You're thinking about the overheat, uh, I don't know, temperature or something like that. Well, all I'm saying is that, yeah, that's true, but it's not going to damage my system. So, well, okay, so you're going to tolerate that. Well, yeah. 
Have they got any justification for that? Why is that? Well, you know what? I have got a mining company. Yep. Okay, so that's a mine site. Okay, so, well, the problem is we have got machineries, we have got container belts, we have got a production line, we are just excavating the ground, we are just digging the ground, we are just getting the rocks and ores or something like that. Put it in the conveyor belt and send it to the dispatching point, and you know what? The ships are there, so they are going to be loaded with the ores, and off you go. You send it to uh, an overseas country, so you have already sold it, yes. So speed is important to you, yes. Oh, okay, so a, a reliable, constant speed in your production line is important because the train is waiting for your cargo to come in, and blah blah blah. Oh, okay, so you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tolerate an outage, a circuit breaker trip, just as a result of a little bit of, I don't know, unbalance or a load in unbalance or something like that. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, all right? And so I would prefer to have an over temperature for a while rather than tripping my second breaker. So with this application that I'm telling you that's mostly happening in, in LV in some particular systems is not very common. I'm not, personally, I'm not recommending you to do this. But all I'm saying is that just for your information, this system exists in some places, and that is the idea behind that. So if someone would like to argue that, say, well, I'm just going to challenge it. So what? Well, the first thing is that if you have got a fault, as you can see in here, have you already provided the path to the ground? Have you already provided the system with a return path to the ground? Well, no. No, okay, so what happens is that if, if you have got an air fault, something like that in your system, either pretty much close to the load or to the source, you know what, what is happening? Okay, so that source is a transformer, say. Well, yeah. Or a generator or something like that, yeah. So you have not connected the neutral point of that source, whatever it is, to the ground. Well, I would say yes. Okay, so you know what? What happens is that if you have got a fault like that, that is simply not detected. As simple as that. So just be aware of that. So it is putting stress on your insulation system in there because that current times the times the resistance of the insulation point or insulation, for example, in the joints or I don't know, in the neutral point or something, is going to give you a voltage. And that voltage will be imposed the, on the weakest points on the insulation material. Just be aware of that. Well, is that all? No. The, another thing is that if, if you have got a second fault, Oh, okay, so if I've got a second fault, yeah, it is quite possible because you have already ignored the first one. If you have got a second fault, for example, somewhere here, all right, in that case, and again, that's an earth to, that's a single face to ground fault, what happens is that now you have got an unwanted return path to the ground, and guess what? You have not put any relay, you have not put any fuses, you have not put any uh, load brake switches, you have not put any CDs or what. So, all I'm saying again, again, this current is not detected and the system is not tripped while it is passing a lot of current this time. So, bang, finish, okay? That's your decision. You want to go for that? Go for it. So what's the benefit? Well, the benefit is cost, of course. You are avoiding an earthing system. You are avoiding earthing mesh. You are avoiding earthing or uh, grounding uh, cabling or something like that. that. That's a benefit, of course. That's a justification for that. I I'm not going to, I'm not going to ignore that, but this is be aware of what's, what may have, what may have happened to you. Well, so have you got any suggestion, Mike? Well, yeah, I would say that you just create before before you have got a second fault and that unwanted return path to the ground happens, you do it yourself. I do it, yes. You just connect the neutral point to the ground. Neutral point of what? I have got a three-phase load and I've got a three-phase source. So I would say first and foremost, let's say if you're going to do it just once, first and foremost is the source. 
Oh, okay, so if let's say I've got a distribution transformer, for example, pretty much close to the load, and this is where my system is fed from, you are advising that if it is, for example, a delta Y or delta star, I just connect the star point to the ground. Well, I would say yes. Okay, so uh, okay, so I quite understand what 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 you mean. So, well, I've got a number of options, and what is that? Well, I can directly connect it to the to the soil, something like solidly earthed, as it is in here, or in between the neutral point and the ground, I can put a resistor. Um, okay, so yeah, you you are correct. Oh, even I can put an impedance. Even I can put another transformer and the secondary side of transformer I connect to a resistor. Okay, so what could be, why is that? Well, the, the fact is this, if I just connect it directly to the ground as it is in here, I am intentionally, deliberately allowing the maximum fault current to be circulating in the circuit. Well, okay, so why are you why are you doing this? Ah, okay, why? Because in this particular site that I am working, as a result of the network impedances, like the positive, negative, zero sequence the impedances of cables and lines and transformers and motors and generators and blah, 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 all these things, just for this specific site that I am talking about, in this specific zone, all right, so the, the, the point is, in this specific site, the fault currents, if they happen, could be very low. Oh, okay, very low, yeah. Earth fault currents I'm talking about. All right, okay, so what's the problem? The problem is, when I look at the setting of my earth fault currents, earth fault relays, basically, it is quite possible that this current is not detected. Ah, oh, okay, so yeah, so I am intentionally allowing the maximum current to flow for this specific site, for this specific site. So it's easy, I, I would just put a CT, say here, and I just connect this CT to an earth fault relay, which I put in here, for example, if it is relay protected, okay? Let's assume this system is relay protected. And then what? So, okay, so I've got a circuit breaker here, and this um, earth fault relay will then trip uh, this um, circuit breaker and just isolate the source if there is a fault, something like that, okay? So this is what you do, yeah. So this, this is, so basically what I'm saying is that in this picture you are seeing the connection of a solidly earthed or grounded, sorry, I say earth in, in Australia we, we really refer to that as earth, but, but, but most of the people in America, as far as I understand, they say grounded or ground, okay, so the same thing, all right? So that is, that is the solidly grounded system that we have got in here, all right? So all I'm saying is that another option to that is that if this is your three-phase system and this is your, um, let's say, earthing system and you have already connected in here, another option for you is to put a resistance or what we call in here, again in here, we call it NER or neutral earthing resistor and in some American books it says NGR or neutral ground resistor. So the idea is this resistor, whatever it is, it will limit the fault current. So you are saying, okay, so now we are in site number two. Just quite the contrary as a, as, as a result of my fault calculations. So this time I can tell you that the fault currents, the earth fault currents, if they happen at all, could be very strong. Not a problem. You have got CT, you have got earth fault relay, the system will be tripped. Uh-uh, no. The issue is that relay is it is very likely it, it, it doesn't operate as a result of many different things. Bad design, I don't know, poor maintenance or, I don't know, mechanical failure or electrical failure or harmonics or anything like that. One in a million, okay, it may not operate at all. So, so the issue is this, I've got half a million dollar asset system in here. If there is a fault, if the relay doesn't operate, then what? The whole system, boom. This is, I'm not going to this to happen, okay? So this, this I don't want to happen. So I put the NGR or NER just to limit 
the fault current. Okay, so we have got some scenarios in here. So that was regarding earth fault. So that is the man-made thing. That's as a result of the network we human beings have made. But what about the things that comes from the nature? Nature, yeah, like lightning strike. So what is lightning? First of all, lightning is the accumulation of a lot of electric charges in clouds. So we are talking about clouds. So what happens is that you have got different temperatures. As you go higher and higher, it's getting colder and colder. And then you have got humidity. You've got, uh, I don't know, moisture in the air or something like that. And what is the dielectric material? The dielectric material is air. Okay, so it means that we have got a huge battery above our head. Yes. So, so what happens is that as a result of the electromagnetic field, as a result of those static charges, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, at some distances, it is quite possible that between the two clouds you have got an arc. This is what we call the thunderstorm. Or between the cloud and earth or ground, you have got an arc. And this time, this is what we call the lightning strike. So whatever it is, what happens is that that dielectric material or air will be ionized. So you will have a breakdown of the molecules of the air, which in this case is the insulation material. And after that, you have got a very strong current coming from the sky that can damage the taller structures, the mass, the buildings, the trees, the cars, the human, and many, many different things. All right? So we have to protect ourselves against that. So I'm not going to go into the very details of molecules or atoms or something like that, but it is easy. It's physics. It's more like what you have already read in, in high school or something like that. So this concept is very easy, basically, for you to understand about the electric charges. But the important thing for us as engineers is designing an appropriate grounding system to handle that. To handle what? To handle millions of amps of current that are coming from the sky. All right, OK. So the first thing is that we have to attract that arc to the place where we would like it to go. Ah, OK, so that's the meaning of arresta. Yes. So you need to have a, you, would, you, would, you may wish to call it lightning arrest, or some people would call it surge arrest, or something like that. So you need to have an LA or SA just to make sure that you have already absorbed it. Okay, and then, and then by means of some kind of ground wires, you have to, you have to transfer, you have to conduct that current to where you want it to go. Okay, so basically, so this is so so, so you, you, are, you are referring to that air thing or grounding mesh, yes. Okay, and then what will happen is that it will be distributed over the, let's say, the area of that mesh, and it will go away. Yeah. That, that is the idea. Okay, so if in that area I've got a lot of equipment like the circuit breaker, CT, VT, transformer, blah, 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 all these things, and I'm, not, and I'm gonna protect all these things against that thing, it means that I have to connect them to the ground, let's say the, um, the, uh, the metal enclosure, uh, the metallic frame, or the neutral point, or whatever you, you are thinking about. I have to connect to the ground just to make sure that if, if there is any unwanted current coming through them, towards them, it will be conducted towards the ground. Well, yes, that is the idea. So obviously, I need to have some rods. I need to have some electrodes. I need to have some spikes, whatever you want to call it, right? Depending from country to country, uh, people use different names. So I need to have, in very simple terms, I need to have some ground or earth electrodes just to make sure that the system has been connected appropriately to the ground. Now we have got issues in here. Some, some countries, for example, say, you know what? In this system, you can also use your water pipe. Oh, okay. 
in this case you can use any metal pipe really yeah well what about if it is gas okay so well maybe not so from country to country it is different when you go into standards American standards could be a little bit different from Aussie standards or British standards say in America we would say yes you want to do it not a problem is that a building site or something like that again you, you, you want to connect it to this pipe not a problem British standard says no if it is in London no I would say no you cannot connect to this or something like that. Well, I would prefer it to be PVC rather than metallic. All right. So I'm not going to argue that. So from country to country, from state to state, it could be different. All right. But what happens is that it has to be safe. It has to provide safety. So when you think about this ground electric, normally the very popular material is copper. Copper and copper clad steel and the steel part of that is galvanized and it should be stainless steel yes why because well you have got a lot of corrosion you have got a lot of moisture you have got a lot of other things like this so this thing it is at all the time into the ground so you have to think about all these things and of course you have got the height of that you have got the depth of burial you have to think about all these things you have to think about how many layers your grounding system has this just one layer or layer one layer two layer three or something or the soil in, in, in very simple terms and how deep you want this ground electrode to get into the ground and how many and to be connected to your system in how many points in what points see and what could be the size of the earthing or grounding table or conductor that will be connected to this electrode? Is it going to be 2 times 95 square millimeter or 2 times 180 or what? So you need to have an understanding. And the, and the answer to all these things depends upon your calculations. Fault calculations, mate. Right? Fault calculations. So your engineer must have already calculated all these things so if you're saying I'm I'm a technical director I'm an engineering manager or something like that obviously you have got some direct reports so you have got I don't know graduate engineer young engineers intermediate engineers so they they have got software package they just simulate the information the system the network they just run the software model and they will be able to tell you in this in, in this area in this location in that location this is the kind of prospective fault current and as a result of that you will then continue with designing your grounding system well at times your engineer may tell you hey you know what in this area we have got a very bad soil bad soil what do you mean well it is a rocky area it's a lot of I don't know it's a mountainous area the soil is very bad it is very hard hard yes so what's the point the point is basically the idea for this grounding system is that it has to show very low resistance isn't it you are already conducting a lot of current into that upon the fault right at the moment of the fault if the soil resistance by itself is very high guess what you have got a gigantic voltage God knows where it goes but it will be applied to something hopefully not across your body that's it so you are going to lower the soil resistance yes how well I'm suggesting something like a chemical electron chemical yeah well at the end of the day you have to help this electrode to do what to to absorb moisture from where from the surrounding from the air from the soil or something and something like whatever reticulation system you have already put in your garden yes sprinklers you can put those sprinklers similar very similar thing for these electrodes just to just a sprinkle uh, every now and then on this just to make sure that the soil around this is still good so these are the so as it says needs regular maintenance It's more like your garden okay if you do not have maintenance the garden is gone all right so as I said you have got depending upon what 
company you have already selected to get your material from. You have got a number of choices for your ground electrodes, but the interesting thing is that you need to make sure about the earth resistance. Normally, the range that is available from for you from the market is 1 to 10 ohms. You would like it lower, you have to pay more, of course. But what is the thing, what is your, where is your, where is your zero tolerance point? You're saying, no, no, no I'm, I'm not going to accept anything higher than that. Why? Because my engineer has already told me the fault current. I know the fault current. And I know the resultant, for example, earth potential rise or ground potential rise as a result of that. So I'm not going to accept any, any earth resistance higher than this. Okay, so in that case, here you are, sir. That, that's it. That is, that is your product. Okay? Go and use it. You have to you have to study not just the fault study it, it it is just the beginning. You need to have soil study. Yes, geotech. You need to get samples of the soil sent into the laboratory. Get an understanding about the presence of the agents that are in the soil. Either they are going to corrode the electrode or not. So why do you need this information? Well, because of coating coating of that electrode something just anti-corrosion coating i may wish to put all right so these are the things that you have to study and as a result of that day that the study will tell you what kind of exactly ground electrode you would require at what depth you have to put it in or something like that so this is the way you would think about it and then you would say all right so what is the idea about all these things I'm just going to protect something? Yes. Protect what? Well, sometimes you would say, I'm just going to protect this transformer. Transformer. What kind of transformer? Power? Regulating? Unit? Distribution? What? What's rating? What ratio? What purpose? What load is going to be connected to that? Right? Sometimes they would say, you know what, we have got an IT room, we have got, I don't know, a comms room, we have got internet servers in here, we have got uh, protection panels in here, we have got comms and SCADA panels in here. Oh, okay, so you are talking about very ele sensitive electronic devices. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So all I'm saying is that even you are so you are saying you you are talking about that voltage yes that voltage as a result of fault current times the resistance of your earthing system something yeah well sometimes you would say even two volts or even ten volts would be tolerable sometimes you would say hey my this this device is working with millivolts even one volt can kill this okay so oh, okay so that's the meaning of a graded insulation system yes. So, okay, so I have to divide this area into a number of zones. Yes. As you are approaching this area from outside, you are coming from the outdoor switch gear towards the rooms and buildings or whatever. Of course, your insulation system, your earthing system must be graded. Well, that's your decision. You, 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 you would like it to be uniform. In that case, you have to apply the worst case scenario to the whole site. It means that, well, my, my <clears throat> zero tolerance is two volts. Oh, no, my dear. You have to pay millions of dollars in that case for that thing. Now, just think wisely. Where are the sensitive devices? Where are the motors? Where are the variable speed drives? These are the things. If this variable speed drive is killed, your system is killed, and this mining system is stopped, okay? Just think about that. Per minute, you have to pay tens of thousands of dollars just because they sue you. They say, hey, I have, I have got my trains ready. I've got my ship ready. I've got my offloading facilities ready. Where is your copper? Where is your gold? Where is your magnesium? Where? It, it, it was supposed to be here by 8 o'clock in the morning. It's already 9 o'clock. The train has not arrived, mate. Where is that? Well, you know what? Sorry, one of, one of the motors is gone. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not acceptable, mate. It's, it's not acceptable. You need to have redundant motors. You need to have redundant protection system. You need to have absolutely fantastic earthing system. It's, it's not an excuse. 
and I'm going to sue you per minute, per hour. You have to pay $100,000 per hour. Really? Yes. I have already sold this gold to my, cl to my client thousands of kilometers away from here. They are waiting for that. <clears throat> the money should be in the bank. I'm not going to tolerate, well, you have not considered this thing for the variable speed drive. That's crazy. So, well, I don't care whether you have to pay, I don't know, half a million dollars for this system. Well, that's sensitive equipment, all right? So, you have to understand about the importance of that, okay? So, now we are at this stage where we have to have a very good understanding about how this system works and what could be the intruders, what could be the unwanted guests, Right, unwanted gas. Yeah, okay, so it's an oil and gas. Is that right? Site. Yeah, so that's a platform on the ocean, on the sea, and we are extracting oil, gas, LNG, blah, blah, okay. Or, no, quite the contrary, that's a mining site. Okay. So obviously, I'm pretty sure, as a result of all those nonlinear loans and the VS, uh, I don't know, very variable, variable speed drives and those motors or whatever, you have got a lot of noise. Noise? What kind of noise? Harmonics, for example. Voltage flicker. Voltage spikes. Electromagnetic interference. Oh, okay, really? From who? See that dish? Antenna dish? See that gas system, piping system? Oh, you have got a lot of guests in here. You have got a complicated system in here underneath the ground. You have got data cables. You have got power cables. You have got water pipes. You have got gas pipes. You have got a lot of things. So that is under the ground. And pretty much close to your side, I can see above the ground, you have got a tower mast. For telecommunication, I can see huge gas pipes. Ah, oh, that's interference, mate. That's interference. And on top of that, we have got the ground loops that I'm going to talk about that shortly. So we have got a lot of things. Ground loop. Like what? Well, I can see, for example, in this building, you have already put two cubicles, two panels, two boards. So, so okay, so inside these things, you have got a lot of electrical equipment. Oh, yes, you have got bus bar, correct. CT, VT, switches, cables, whatever. Yes. Alarms, monitoring, so it's electrical, 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 electrical. Yes. So you have got a source for that. Oh, yeah, so the, uh, we have got a power cabinet, something like a switch box or... Um, fuse box or whatever you can think of. Yeah, okay. But the point is these two panels are supplied from the same power cabinet. Well, that's true. Yes, okay, okay. So they have already been connected from one side. Yes. And from the other side, they have been grounded to the same grounding system. Well, I would say yes. So, so um, as far as I can see, the system is not solely electrical. Um, well, yeah, you know what? We have got some relays in here, for example. We have got some data cables in here. We have got a SCADA. We have got, um, I don't know, PLC or something. So, so all I'm saying is that we have got some data cables, comms cables, signaling, instrumentation. So what's the problem? The problem is those cables have got shield, have got sheaths. Okay, and guess what? They have been grounded. Grounded, yes, to a different ground. Nope, to the same ground. All right, okay. So it is quite possible that not necessarily a fault, fault current if you have got even a residual current, unbalanced load, load unbalanced current or something like that. So it will circulate between your power system and your comms or telecommunication system. From the screen or sheath or shield to the ground and back, to the ground and back. 
So what's the problem? Aha, uh -huh. that circulation is more like similar, similar to harmonics. So what would happen? What would happen? Overheat. Oh, okay. Overheat, yes. Overheat of the cabinet. Overheat of the insulation material of the cabinet. So that you may have a leakage current. That's why we, we normally hire leakage current leakage protection for the LV panels. You know better than me. Okay? Oh, okay. So we have got these things, yes. And also have a look at that RG. That is your building grounding system. So you're not talking about a physical resistor that I can get in my hand. No, 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 no. That's a system, your system, earthing system, resistance. It is not a resistor. It is a resistance. But electrical-wise, I have shown it like this. Oh, okay, so we have to consider all of that, yes. And especially if there is a person standing right over here on that time, and by any chance that person is touching this. So think about all these things. This ground loop can kill, depending on the magnitude of the fault current, depending on of that RG, depending on the level of that circulation. So we have got all these things. Right, so what are other, let's say, uh, problems? Well, you talked about voltage flicker. You talked about voltage spike. You talked about transient over voltages in very short. Yes. Okay. So what was the problem? Well, we have got sometimes we have got inductors in the system. Again, there is a difference between inductor and inductance. Sometimes you can see a physical thing, huh? Like the, uh, let's say, the inductors in your zone substations. That's a physical thing. You can see it is sitting next to your cap back, right? That's one thing. Sometimes you have got inductance in your system. Doesn't matter. The same thing, all I'm saying is that just be aware of that. The nature of that, according to what Michael Faraday said many, many years ago, right? You have got an electromagnetic field, and as a result of that, you have got voltage induced voltage, which is L times dI divided by dt. Well, we are all engineers, we understand each other, so I'm not going to go into the mathematics or something, but if you understand that dI to dt or delta I to delta t means the growth, the trend, the slope of the current over the time. Right? So basically what happens is that you have got a sudden surge at the time of energization, like, for example, eddy current, like, I don't know, energization current, something like that, just one moment at the time of switching, at the time of switching. And that can kill. Kill who? Insulation. So be, be aware of all these things. So you have got a lot of these things. Another problem is that, again, in those sites, you have got very, very important, delicate, critical equipment. You have got zero tolerance against any kind of voltage fluctuation, interruption or something. Electronics, internet, Ethernet, a lot of things like that. So you are hiring UPS. UPS, uh -huh. that UPS by itself is a problem. So be aware of that, okay? So you, you have to be careful about all these things. Is that thyristor based? Yes. Is that inverter based? Transistor inverter based? Yes. Is that IGBT or something like that? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, it is a very good source of supply, uninterrupted power supply against the voltage variations and fluctuations, but at the same time, it can be assumed as a nonlinear load at times, okay? So be aware of all these things, right? You have to do with thyristor control. 